Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here at CatchUSU.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about what ammunition choices you should make for self-defense. A lot of people wonder that always and especially in times like now. Not only am I going to cover 9mm, 357.45, I'll mention stuff lower than 9mm, like 380 and less. And I'll get to uh, 12 or 20 gauge shotguns and 223.556 as we go along. I have a lot of data here, we'll see if we get to it, but just know that... You know, I've researched this stuff for years, and my choices are very informed. Okay, so for 9mm, uh, basically, uh, guys, to understand uh, handgun ballistics, all handguns basically suck as a physical stopper compared to a shotgun or a rifle. It's not like the movies. It's just the truth of the matter. Uh, once you're below 2,600 feet per second, things are not the same in a handgun as they are with a rifle. So handguns basically suck. It's about penetrating deep enough to get to an organ or a central nervous system and doing some damage to said organs. And if you don't hit organs, they really don't do a whole lot. If it doesn't hit a organ, or even if it does, you're looking at uh, blood loss, basically tissue crush. People don't really understand tissue crush. It was in the original FBI data you see I have here, and no one bothers to calculate it nowadays, even though it's a simple mathematical equation. Um, tissue crush, how much tissue is damaged, how much blood loss, because people eventually drop from the stock pressure uh, blood blood pressure loss, uh, but that may not happen for 50 seconds even after you shoot somebody's heart out. So uh, you just need to realize that. So number one is penetration. Number two is expansion. Combine those together, that gets tissue crushed. Doesn't matter if you don't get to at least 12 inches in real gel. Real gel is not the same as um, clear gel. Clear gel, I should say, is not the same as real gel. It penetrates farther in smaller calibers than in real life and in real gel. But uh, penetration, expansion, and then all else being equal, I want the more energy. I don't care what people nowadays want to claim. All else being equal, I want more energy. Faster is better. So, anyway, 9mm, what my opinion is, is you want a 124 plus P. Now, everything does depend on barrel length and every caliber, but these are just some general guidelines. Uh, I am wearing gloves today. There are reasons for that because I don't want to put ammo back in the case as it has my oil on it. There's COVID right now and, uh, you know, other reasons. So, you want 124 plus P. People say, well, what about 147? What about 115? Uh, in general, 115 sucks in 9mm in real world. It may very well ricochet uh, off bone and go in funny places and not penetrate deep enough. So, in general, there's a couple exceptions, but in general, 115, there's like three exceptions really, but in general, 115 kind of sucks. Other people are going to say, well, what about 147? Well, while 147 gold dots and 147 HST can perform well in a controlled setting of ballistics gel in real world, I believe through the different tissues, organs and, and, and the body is made up of constantly different layers of different tissues and different elasticity. And if you even do simple bone testing and stuff, you'll see that you do not get uniform expansion a lot of times. Uh, if a 147, even though the guy's trying to line it up, a bone in front of ballistics gel, a 147 hits it, you get uh, only expansion on one side of the bullet. Um, so I do not think it is a, a at a high enough velocity to meet the expansion threshold, even in the very best hollow points, to c consistently give uh, uniform, uniform, consistent hollow point expansion. That is my belief. I know other people uh, think otherwise on that subject matter, but anyway, 124 plus P, if you can handle it, if it's a three and a half, uh, or longer inch barrel. If it's shorter than that, it's a really lightweight and a newer shooter and it's recoil sensitive. The only standard pressure I like is 124 HST. If you can do 124 plus P, the basically best out there for civilians would be uh, this 124 plus P HST, which is this bullet profile, this bullet profile here. See a nice deep hollow point. You got to always function check your weapon with enough rounds to be satisfied with it, including like limp wristing and stuff and offhand, make sure that it functions in your pistol. But for civilians, it'd be HST. If you're more worried about penetration through auto glass, which is very hard to defeat front windshields, um, then gold dot 124 plus P gold dot would be uh, better if you're law enforcement. 
or uh, military, something like that, where you have to worry more about intermediate barriers, but HSTs are very good. Uh, past those two main choices, a Golden Saber or Golden Saber uh, Bonded, Golden Saber Black Belt is good. Uh, the, the Black Belt won't uh, drop its separate from the core, but regular tends to separate from its core and Golden Saber, but street results with Golden Saber and multiple calibers is good. Um, v crowns okay in 124 i would not be feel comfortable with it if there was the new plus p nato v crown or the v crown plus p i, th I know there's a nato plus p version now the 124 v crown that wouldn't be bad this is 9 bp le this is a very vaunted round real world street results very high velocity 1300 feet per second maybe 1400 on a hot dry day um this gets gives real world 357 magnum results though uh, I like it in warmer client, warmer climates. If I was in a colder state where I expect multiple layers of clothing, this bullet does not act like any other bullet. Uh, where most hollow points will penetrate farther through heavy clothing, this penetrates less. Now it did have good results with Illinois State Police for years, but all the data I've seen makes me not like this. If it, to defeat, uh, there's just too much quick shredding. Uh, of the bullet early on um, to have a, enough of a core to reach deep uh, in the body. Uh, you could always do Dutch loading, staggered loading. A lot of people are against that, but, you know, make that up to you. I do certain things like that with a heavy pistol that can handle the recoil, and the recoil difference is so minimal with a heavy pistol with a guy who knows how to shoot and has good recoil control. It doesn't really matter. The only other 115 that's decent is HTP plus P. So you got to go plus P or plus P plus for 115, 124 plus P is the way to go. Guys, I'm going to get to shotguns. I'm going to get to rifles. Next up, 357 Magnum. Um, something like this original Federal loading, even from this 3-inch barrel, uh, could get up to 1,400 feet per second. So, this original badass Federal Loading or Remington, but the Federal penetrates deeper from all that data I've seen than the Remington. Federal loading 125 grain or Federal loading 158 grain. I've seen the FBI data on this back from 90, 91. The 125 is uh, the, the street load that was known to be like a lightning bolt. I believe in it, but a huge attacker, it might not go deep enough or through an arm. It may not go deep enough. It's Real world, I got data here, up here, 15 inches in clear gel, but FBI was just under 12 inches in real gel. Real gel is very different. Um, however, the 158 grain is more like over 15 inches and even more expansion. So do with that as you will. Again, I think there's nothing wrong with going with deeper penetrating rounds as you go on in your pistol or revolver, even though that's controversial. If you're going to need it, it's there. Um, but you want the most expansion, most damage up close when most uh, self-defense stuff start, it's there. For reloads, I don't want lead in my pocket in a speed strip. For reloads, uh, critical duty, 135 grain. This doesn't penetrates far. It's going to go through barriers with the FTX type of tip in here, the plastic tip that pushes out the hollow point. I like critical duty in 357 and 10 millimeter in 45. I do not like critical duty. Again, I repeat, I do not like critical duty in 9 millimeter unless it's for a backup mag. It simply doesn't expand enough in 9 millimeter, and it's it's almost the the tissue crush is very minimal it's almost like a ball around it's not a very good permanent wound cavity in nine millimeter and the others it's pretty good it's not my top choice but it's pretty good or it's good for a reload very very good for a reload because if you happen to be in a rare extended firefight that means cover is likely involved okay so besides those choices in 357 magnum here's early fbi data guys you're going to see there's a difference between calibers. Now, things have improved a lot since then, but there's still a difference between calibers. We can't go into all that now. The best data you can find nowadays is Vista Outdoors for HST and Gold Dots, and you compare those, and then you can compare that to all the YouTube testers, and you can kind of get a sense of more what real is like. And uh, this Vista data is there. You can find it right there. I'll leave Vista Outdoor. Look at Vista Gel Test Results, and then do the comparison Compare HSTs and gold dots and C. For civilians, you want to look at heavy clothing primarily. And if you're more involved, you might also want to look at plywood because I worry about bones, sternums, ribs. So plywood and heavy clothing is more, more, most important 
If you are law enforcement, of course, then you need to look at auto glass and steel results. This is real testing. This is real FBI calibrated testing and proper temperatures, not YouTube channels, though those are good reference points to have as well. Uh, but real gel is not clear gel. Clear gel, the baby calibers seem to do good and people are taunting that nowadays. That's because smaller diameter go farther because clear gel rips easier than real ballistics gel. So smaller diameter calibers, the weaker calibers do way better than they would do in real world. They simply uh, would not penetrate in real world or even in real gel like they do. You could always go by Dr. Gary Roberts approved list in different calibers. That is a very, very good reference point. Uh, ammo to go has them in different calibers. 938, 357, 9, 357, 45, ammo to go. Also very good reference points, but pay attention to the barrel lengths uh, in testing, guys. Okay, so now on to 45. In 45, uh, my top choice would be a 230 grain HST or plus P if you want. Know that you might get a little more expansion, a little under penetration, a little less penetration with the plus P, but a little more energy. I decided that uh, standard pressure is probably good, good if not better, uh, but you can always make that choice and kind of depends on barrel length as well. My second choice, especially if you have an older, like a 1911, Paul Harrell did a Rock Island 1911 review the other day. Very good, except that when it feed HSTs reliably, especially in 1911s, older pistols, you might find the deep hollow point of an HST might get hung up on the feed wrap, the crimps and stuff, whereas a uh, golden saber may not. 185 grain plus P, plus P, not standard pressure. It's not going to penetrate deep enough in standard pressure in real gel in real world. I, uh, again, clear gel is not real world, not real gel even. Plus P, 185 would be my second choice. There's also 230 grain um, uh, uh, Ranger loads, 230 grain, uh, other Winchester loads. The PDX-1 is probably very good from a 5-inch barrel. However, PDX-1 and other Winchester loads do not reliably expand in shorter barrels. So, that's why these two are my choices. A Ranger is good from a 5-inch barrel, but a PDX-1 or is good from a 5-inch barrel, but it's not necessarily good from shorter barrels, not reliable. Very good choice, or at least for backups, or if you have feeding issues, or if you have an older pistol, you're worried about feeding issues, is going to be the 220 grain plus P critical duty. More penetration, better through barriers, not as much expansion. Guys, in self-defense, your most important rounds are your very few, first few rounds out of your guns. You want the pretty much the, mo the most expansion you can get while meeting good, pen good deep penetration depths. Uh, if it happens to go past 7 or 10 rounds, which is really rare or really even more rare to need a backup magazine or a sp speed loader, then something like Critical Duty uh, makes sense because, you know, they may be getting into a car or behind cover at that point. Or they're a 400-pound attacker. And you're not reaching his vitals through his arms and multiple layers of clothing and things of that nature. Now, for 12 gauge, guys, I don't have any rounds out. But for 12 gauge, everyone says buckshot, double alt buck will get it done. But for home defense, unless you live outside and you're worried about people pulling up in cars and stuff, then higher pellet count, higher velocity, double alt makes more sense. But for typical people, home defense, apartment defense, smaller home, number one buck, in my opinion, is the way to go at a reduced velocity. Simple, cheap SMB number one buck training rounds are great. Um, it patterns not too narrow, not too wide. For home defense, at home defense, typical self-defense ranges, that's actually what most people would want. You're not someone like at Lucky Gunner Chris, no offense, who's taking tactical shotgun classes, doing 15, 20-yard headshots, hostage taker headshots. That is not the typical self-defense situation. That would be a far extreme outlier of most needs. Most needs is you're groggy and you actually want shot dispersions. That's why you're picking a shotgun over a rifle. Now you don't want too wide, which would be like number four buckshot that doesn't have the flight control. That would be too wide. Whereas the flight control is really too narrow in my opinion for the typical five, seven yard at the outlier 15 yard shot in someone's house. And that's, you know, pretty long hallway. That's a very long hallway. So uh, number one buck, even a reduced velocity, 1200 feet per second from defense is gonna do someone down just fine. You don't need 1600 feet per second and the, the, the extra recoil that comes with it. So 1200, 1250, 1235, those loads 
uh, a number one buck. And there's more pellets, which does more damage than actual 12, 16 pellets of number one buck probably has more hit probability of organs than nine pellets, eight or nine pellets of double aught. Um, if you're not expecting to have to bash your cover. Now in the military, that may be different. You're expecting to get in firefights to go through more serious cover than double aught or even single aught buck uh, or slugs might make more sense. Now for two, two, three, five, five, six guys, you're going to, uh, you're going to want, I'm going to put the camera on me now. You're going to want um, a typical uh, 193 round of 55 grain and 193 round does just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that does, it's cheaper and you can get it from different manufacturers and all the 193s. Some might be a little less accurate than others long range. Uh, yeah, my hair is all messed up. I don't care. Um, but it's going to do a good job. Now, for home defense, do I want better than that? Yeah. And so your first 10, 15, 20 rounds of a magazine after you made sure to function tech at least some of them, um, more expensive rounds in the heavier weight category. If you have a rifle that has a one in eight twist, one in seven twist, one in nine twist, know that it's going to destabilize after about 100 yards, possibly, if you haven't tested it. So uh, higher twist rate barrels are better uh, because then you can use a 75 grain or 77 grain OTM. Anything higher is going to usually give... Uh, more damage and there's testers and you could look at them but that's the general rule um, cheap 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 is a 75 grain ppu and actually the expansion it does instead of breaking up it looks like a big old smashed up gold dot uh, pistol round a 75 grain ppu air 15.com uh, he does a lot of that stuff look at the testing a 77 grain otm round that is really going to be the best that's expensive, but like that PPU round's cheap. If you go the 65, 60, uh, you know, mid-range, 62, 65 grain stuff, that might be okay with tap and, and, and higher grade ammo like that. Uh, but basically, get some heavier stuff uh, if you're expecting short-range engagement, you know, home defense. Uh, if you're not worried about where the 2-inch difference might be at 100 yards between 55 grain and 77 grain, 75, 77 grain, or just 55 grain M193 is better than the 62 grain um, steel penetrating stuff, which actually doesn't penetrate steel as well as the 55 grain or even armor, uh, soft armor or hard armor, 3A armor within distance as good as the 55 grain stuff does because higher velocity is what gets the job done it does destroy concrete a little bit faster so for urban environment warfare uh to defeat cover to actually defeat cover and break down the guy's cover <laughs> then you know there's still some use to that ammo perhaps but anyway guys i think that basically covered it. i'll quickly go over this since this ran so long anyway old fbi testing see the difference between Adjusted volume. This is crushed cavity. Okay, that's what matters and nobody seems to know this or pay attention to that Because if I don't hit number one, you have a higher probability of actually damaging organ or it's small but a higher probability of damaging organ nicking a, uh, a vein that's an artery with a bigger bullet. Okay It's just the way it is But if you look at crush volume compared to like nine millimeter now things have improved but look at the crush volume 2.6 to 3.6 to what 10 millimeter and 45 has. Just saying it's important to know this stuff and be able to find this stuff and reference this stuff. Again, Vista, looking at real gel data is going to put things in a lot of perspective from what other people put out there. Real gel is different than clear gel. Uh, look at and don't look at bear gel results, it really doesn't matter too much unless you like live on an island. Uh, look at heavy clothing, and then you can see expansion, penetration numbers, retained weight, etc. Other good reference, look up doc, uh, Dr. Gokar, Dr. GKR, Dr. Gokar, Dr. Gary Roberts, uh, approved list. That's all that's approved in 9mm, if you can find that list, guys. I trust him. Anything he puts up, let's go down. He barely tested any 357. Um, I skipped over 40. 40, uh, in my opinion, 165 green HST is the best. 
uh, for civilians, 165 rolled out for law enforcement. That's my take on 40 cal. I skipped over 380 because 380 and under basically sucks, guys. 380 and 380. I have a video on that XTP. Anything with that XTP bullet is going to probably be the best between penetration and expansion. If you want a little more penetration, I like the 88 grain HTP. It doesn't expand, but it does penetrate a little bit farther without over penetration, if there is such a thing. And like, very often it will actual tumble and tumble does cause damage and if you put 380 in a ball or especially like a 32 nothing wrong with ball in such a small caliber in real world it's not going to penetrate out somebody and if it does it's probably caught in their back skin or their t-shirt or it's going to just bloop out it's there's very little damage if you actually hit someone be more worried about the 80 percent of shots that you're going to miss just like police do in any actual shooting that have full velocity so Dr. Gary Roberts, uh, Lucky Gunner guys, Lucky Gunner Labs, but pay attention to barrel lengths. Lucky Gunner Labs, pay attention to barrel lengths. Guys, you see how well the HST Plus P124 does, 18.3 inches. Again, it's clear gel and real gel. It's not that, it's more like 1366 expansion. Compare that to like a 45 though, just something to consider. And 357. Tech XPD would be great. I didn't mention that in 357. Barnes Tech XPD, it's just expensive. But that actually looks like that has the best results with penetration and the hugest expansion. So that would give you the most tissue crush. 